Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We continue reading from the 40 principles of the religion, the 40 fundamentals, and the 40 fi usul al-deen. By Imam Ghazal, rahmanullah, wa nafa'na bi'unum fi al-darayn, ameen, ameen, ameen. And uh, we have uh, read from the the principle, the fundamental, the chapter on uh, sincerity and uh, truthfulness. And we'll continue, and inshallah, we will uh, continue even uh, one more uh, reading. It's a lengthy uh, uh, chapter. And then we will move to uh, reliance or tawakkul. That will be the seventh, the thirty-seventh uh, principle or fundamental. So the subtitle here is the ability to intend many purposes by uh, one deed. If you know the virtue of intention and that it opens up the opportunity for attaining one's purpose and has an effort on it, then strive to increase intention in all of your deeds until you intend by one deed many purposes. If your aspiration is true, you will be directed to the path of your guidance. One example will suffice you. Entering the mosque, And sitting in it is a single act of worship. Yet, it is possible for you to intend by it eight things. The first of them is that you believe that it is Allah's uh, house, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the one who enters it is Allah's visitor. So you intend that. Then Imam al-Ghazali mentions a hadith that it is, has a weak chain of narrators. Uh, whoever sits in a mosque has visited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only right that the host honors his guest. Now this in terms of a meaning, it should be fine inshallah. Uh, The second of them is the intention of vigilance due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's t- uh, verse in the uh, Quran وَصَابِرُ وَرَابِطُ Endure and be vigilant Ribat in Islamic uh, and the Islamic worldview is uh, originally the ribatat. They used to be on the my understanding that they used to be on the edge of the uh, Islamic state uh, in the uh, history of Islam, uh, meaning at borders and uh, it would entail uh, maintaining uh, a space uh, it would have that sense of defending uh, by presence and one of the most famous uh, contemporary uses of uh, Ribat is the uh, Ribat at uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, simply by, by being there, by praying, by uh, reciting the Quran, by uh, rem- you know, making rem- rem- remembrance of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Even those who are steadfast in, in working there, it's not easy for the uh, uh, Waqf administration, the Department of Waqf, which is part of the Jordanian 
Ministry of Religious Affairs and Holy Places. Uh, so simply by uh, by doing your best, simply reaching your place of work, uh, and it's uh, it's an honor, it's an act of worship, and you could definitely think about many uh, intentions in and fulfilling that. Now the the um, the narrative about the murabidin uh, murabidat. Well, all Muslims are murabidin murabidat wherever they are, depending on their intention. And it's not an organization or anything uh, that would have some uh, political implications in the sense of as if uh, only a specific group of men or women who are uh, doing the ribat, that is not really uh, true. It is every Muslim uh, um, who intends to be in a state of, uh, of ribat. So it does have that theological background, that uh, juridical background, that spiritual background, of course. It is said that it is. It means waiting for the next prayer after praying, which many do. Alhamdulillah. The third, the third of them is uh, staying in the mosque. This means withholding hearing, sight, and the body parts from normal movement. Indeed, it is a form of abstinence. Allah's messenger. Uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this hadith, it's not a hadith really. La Aslala, Imam Iraqi. The monasticism of my community is sitting in the mosques. Well, it's not monasticism, but definitely uh, just being at the mosque is uh, if waiting from one prayer to the other. You could have, you could have itikaf really, that would be true. The itikaf, usually we speak about the last 10 days of Ramadan, but not only the last 10 days of Ramadan. The Islamic Waqf Council in Jerusalem published a statement uh, in which uh, it encouraged really itikaf uh, and making sure that people understand that they could do etikaf at any time at uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, not that it is easy uh, to do so, but simply they, they wanted people to understand that this is really the position of the Islamic Waqf Council. You can make etikaf between noon and afternoon, between noon and night, between fajr and night uh, prayers. The fourth of them is seclusion and repelling all preoccupation for the sake of quietly attend, contemplating the afterlife and how to prepare for it. The fifth of them is freeing oneself for remem remembrance of Allah, listening to it and or allowing someone else to listen. According to the Prophet uh, Hadith, the prophetic tradition, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Whoever goes to the mosque early remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or remind, reminding, uh, reminding of him is like the fighter in Allah's uh, path subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kal Mujahid. Well, this is uh, a hadith known to be uh, from the cement, a statement of Kaab al Ahbar. But there are a couple of traditions corresponding to this idea that have uh, better, uh, you know, chains of narratives. In fact, the first one uh, has a good chain of narrator. The second one was is narrated by both Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, and uh, whoever goes to the uh, early to the mosque, uh, with the intention, with having the intention uh, 
only to uh, either uh, learning something uh, beneficial or to teach something beneficial this would be the uh, the reward for him will be like uh, uh, someone who performed a pilgrimage a full pilgrimage kajri had tam and hajj isnad ho jayid the second one is really uh, as we said narrated by bukhari muslim so it's a, has an excellent uh, chain you know chain of uh, narrators he who goes ill to the mosque uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare um, uh, you know back and forth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare for him uh, uh, a residence in, uh, in paradise every time he goes or uh, uh, returns narrated by Abu Hurairah uh, so this is definitely the uh, uh, a very high reward for uh, such an attachment to the mosque and you know very well also that from the there is another there is a hadith uh, uh, those the seven the seven people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, whom he will uh, uh, have them he will have them uh, uh, covered uh, in the shade of uh, the throne on the day of judgment one of them is uh, a man whose heart is attached to the mosques um, every time he leaves the mosque his heart you know he, he cannot handle it until he goes back to the uh, the mosque all mosques loves the mosque loves the environment at the mosque and the sixth of them is that you intend to disseminate knowledge as a way of letting someone who performs the prayer poorly prohibiting an evil or commanding you are good so that virtuous deeds are facilitated because because of it and the one taught shares in the goodness the seventh the seventh of them is that you abandon sins out of shyness before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by confining yourself to the to his house or the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you are too shy to per perpetrate a sin. The eighth of them is that you gain a brother in Allah, for surely that is a prize and treasure for the abode of the hero of the afterlife. And the mosque is the hub of uh, for religious people who love for and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So eight action, eight same one action with multiple intentions, and that's beautiful. The very last one, uh, and the mosque is the hub for religious people who love for and in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Just that you know, uh, I would say that it's. Uh, the mosque has been the center of the of the city so if you plan uh, a new neighborhood a new town uh, a housing you know project the mosque is at the center of the uh, of the project not only that when they uh, built a new campus for the uh, International Islamic University in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, the center was the uh, the center of the campus was the mosque, uh, literally, and uh, it had uh, open sides 
uh, so there will be some kind of uh, continuous connection to the space outside the mosque and those who are outside they will have that you know continuum within uh, the mosque uh, going in all to all to going to your lecture hall to, to going to the library going to administration the mosque is at, at the center that's a beautiful architecture regard all of your actions in this fashion for by meeting of these intentions actions are purified and become comparable to the actions of those brought near in the same way the opposite readers the opposite renders them comparable to the actions of devils an example of this is someone who intends to sit in the mosque and converse about meaningless things, joke about people's honor, sit with the adherence of amusement and games, look at any woman or a young boy who passes by, argue with uh, his peers for the sake of pride and being seen in order to sway the hearts of those listening to him talk, or other intentions in the same vein likewise a person should not be heedless about having a good intention in regards to permissible things it is mentioned in a report indeed the slave will be questioned about everything on the day of resurrection even about the kohl on his eye the uh, just simply to bring it closer to uh, the uh, listeners uh, or the readers uh, understanding the kohl on his eye like the uh, eyeliner uh, today usually for the uh, ladies but kohl could be uh, used also for uh, men so don't be surprised to see some uh, some people having kohl uh, some men the fig uh, crumbs on his uh, fingers and him touching his brother's garment i think the uh, just to correct the translation The fig crumbs, well, the Arabic text is about teen and not teen, and that will be mud. Okay. You know very well that fig does not have crumbs anyhow. So uh, the Arabic text is about teen, and that's a vocalized T. It's not T. It's not teen. It's not. Uh, it's not figs. Uh, an example of intention in regards to permissible things is that uh, whoever puts on scent for friday uh, meaning uh, you know some perfume it is possible for him to intend enjoyment of its pleasant smell boasting by showing how expensive it is or adorning himself for women and corrupt people Yet, yet it is conceivable that he intends to follow the Sunnah, venerating Allah's uh, house, Subhanahu wa Taala, honoring uh, Friday, repelling annoyance from someone else by repelling uh, body odor. 
enabling them to relax through a pleasant scent or closing the door or backbiting if they were to have smelled the foul odor coming from him. This is an allusion to uh, these two types and uh, uh, here it, 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 it does attribute to the, uh, certain uh, traditions to the Prophet Sallallahu but before we, it, okay let's put it this way so the prophetic tradition whoever puts on scent for Allah he will come forth a day of resurrection and his scent will be more pleasant than the scent of musk whoever puts on scent for other than Allah he will come forth on the day of resurrection and his scent will be more foul than a corpse uh, you know the the sunnah uh, on Friday or this there are many sunnah on Friday uh, we'll restrict ourselves because of the context here to uh, uh, having a shower on Friday ghusl really in the uh, ritual sense it doesn't mean that you don't have uh, a shower on other on other days in fact it's the other way around if the intention is also to uh, so people will not be bothered by your uh, by your um, you know uh, uh, by your smell then uh, then and it's within your reach you are not really living in the desert anymore uh, uh, where there is lack of water for example uh, many people have uh, you know, uh, they have ample water. Subhanallah, we mention uh, water and we remember how the uh, the people in uh, in Gaza they uh, they cut off water from and electricity and uh, fuel and and food and medicine and. Um, the ability of human beings to be e evil in that sense is uh, is mind-boggling really at any rate so yes why not have a shower every day even in winter in fact in summer why not have two showers a day one in the morning and one in the uh, in the afternoon in the evening that's uh, and also, uh, if it's really if changing your uh, your garment, if uh, if your sweat sticks to your garment, then that's also part of the story. And the scent that you put the perfume, all we have, you know. Uh, You know, not every perfume, the, the sunnah is to have nice scent. It doesn't mean that every, every scent is nice. That's another story. Yeah. Intention does not come under choice. Another subtitle. No, that intention does not come under choice, so you should not be deluded and say with your tongue and your heart, I intend such and such by sitting in the mosque and think you have intended. You know from what I have mentioned previously that intention is the motivation without which the existence of these would be inconceivable. An affected intention is like a person saying, I intended to love and venerate so and so or i intended to be thirsty or hungry or satiated each one of these is motivated by an element of necessity that is affected by its causes for their occurrence is inconceivable without their causes thus 
a person saying that he intended them without them coming into effect is him merely talking to himself it is not intention how can the one who has sex due to an overwhelming desire for it say that he intended to have sex for the sake of having children and to increase their number as a source of pride alluding to the uh, uh, hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which uh, he said uh, uh, do get married, do multiply, I will take pride on, in you on the day of judgment. On the contrary, you will not be successful in provoking these intentions from your heart unless your faith is strong and your knowledge of the lowliness of immediate fortune in this world compared to the magnitude of reward in the afterlife is complete. Once this predominates in you, it necessarily awakens within you a desire for everything that is that is a, a means to a reward in the afterlife. If it does not motivate, then you have no intention. For a similar reason, the pious predecessors would stop performing some good deeds to the extent that it has, narrated, has been narrated that Muhammad ibn Sirin did not pray at the funeral of Hassan al-Basri and said, the correct intention is not present with me. It was said to Tawus, pray for us, like, you know, um, pray for us in the sense of, uh, uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, uh, something for us. He said, uh, he said, not until I find the intention, like the correct intention. Not that you'd push a button and I will act as if the intention is always ready there. Someone said, I have been searching for the intention to visit a sick man for a month. And the intention is still not correct with for me. Uh, it, if the sick person is a, a famous rich person, uh, What's your intention for visiting the sick person? Is it really for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for the sake of uh, some material gain? Uh, which does not have to be immediate. Whoever knows the reality of intention and knows that is the spirit of action does not tire himself with an action that has no spirit. This is verified by the fact that permissible the permissible could become better than worship if intention is present therein. Hence, whoever has an intention to gain strength for worship through eating and drinking and is not motivated to fast at that time, then eating is more appropriate for him. Whoever gets bored with worship and knows that sleeping will re-energize him. Sleeping is better for him. Indeed, if he knows, for example, that lightening up for a moment with jokes or permissible conversation will increase his energy, then that is better for him than praying while bored. The Prophet ﷺ said, Truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not... Uh, will not get bored until you get bored, meaning will not get bored of you worshipping him until you get bored of worshipping him. Uh, and this is narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Abu Darda anh, said, indeed, I relax through some amusement so that it may be a support for me upon the truth. So, don't really, uh, no need for self-flagellation, uh, no need for you to feel guilty if there's a, a beautiful moment of halal amusement. Uh, you strengthen yourself. 
Ali bin Abi Talib radiyallahu anh said, let the heart rest. For indeed, if it is forced, it will be blinded. These uh, mutiae are regarded as a burden by superficial jurists. وهذه دقائق يستثقلها الظاهريون من الفقهاء and then he compares them just as an unskilled physician regards treating a feverish person by giving him meat to eat as a as burdensome meaning that uh, where, where a diet is uh, where restriction is necessary he called them superficial jurists whereas an expert would order it so that the strength of the sick person returns until he is able to take the proper medicine thereafter the second pillar is regarding sincerity of intention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ They were not commanded except to worship Allah, making the religion purely for Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in the Qur'an, أَلَى اللَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِصِ Indeed, the pure religion is for Allah. And a third verse, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَأَتَصَمُوا بِاللَّهِ وَأَخْلَصُوا دِينَهُمْ لِلَّهِ Except those who repent, rectify, hold on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make their religion purely for Allah. This uh, part ends with the uh, mentioning uh, prophetic traditions that are uh, none of them uh, is uh, sound really the Prophet Sallallahu said Allah like Hadith Qudsi uh, but it's not uh, said sincerity is secret from my secret I have placed it in the heart of whomever I love among my slaves. It's not a hadith. Um, it's not sound hadith. Um, it's very, very weak. Uh, the Prophet said to Ma'ad, uh, make your action, make your action sincere and a small amount will suffice you. As such, it's, uh, uh, it is da'if. There is uh, still, I mean, we can correct what is known uh, in the literature. Rather than akhlas al-amal, yudzik al-qalil min, you will find it akhlas dinak, yakfik al-amal, yakfik al-amal al-qalil. Still, it is da'if anyhow. It is it has a weak chain of, uh, of narrators. And the third one, uh, the Prophet said, there is no slave who makes his actions sincere for 40 days, except that springs of wisdom flow from his heart to his tongue. Uh, this might be, um, uh, there might be a practical uh, truth to this, uh, but the hadith itself is uh, is weak. In fact, there are those who said, not only it is da'is, there are those who said uh, uh, it is munkar. It's, that cannot be hadith. Though the meaning, uh, might be, might be true. So the speaking about the chain of narratives, if you uh, if you are sincere for forty uh, days, hmm. could it be that you'll have uh, wisdom? Hmm. Might be, inshallah. So until tomorrow, we will not judge. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an anta sarkhu wa tuwalek. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته